Yeah. Michelle, Samantha, Stingray, Kara Stone. I think I got everybody. Come on, hit the like. Hit the like. Don't forget the like now. Donna said that X North really thought I was going to help him. Not stop at the door. Do not advance. No, we're not. What's up, Paul? <laughs> hey, Kathy, Catherine. Thank you so much, Val. I appreciate it. Yes, indeed. You got to have some comedy. Yes, you do. Because listen, y'all, we're about to do something to this narcissist this evening. Yes, we are. And it's not even going to be funny. It's not. It's not even going to be funny. Because the narcissist definitely, definitely had a weapon that they formed against you. Who knew? It, they didn't know it wasn't going to prosper. But they tried. But they tried. It didn't prosper. It won't prosper. It cannot prosper. I'll say that again. The narcissist formed a weapon against us that did not prosper. It will not prosper. It cannot prosper. Did you hear me? <laughs> And, and secondly, ladies and gentlemen, I, I first, I, let me thank you. Let me thank everybody who comes through. I want to thank everybody that tunes in to make the show what it is. And I especially want to thank you guys that reach out with your stories, with the current situations, because, I, and I want to let you know that that is instrumental when it comes to dealing with narcissism, guys. Oh, it is. It is instrumental because you guys help so many people with the reassurance. The reassurance that not only do they come back, not only do they get what they are supposed to. You always confirm when you see, oh, yeah, the narc still doing the same thing that they were doing. They're still doing the same thing that they were doing with you, but they're getting worse. They're still doing the same thing. They're still living the same life. They're still telling the same lies. They're still living the same lie. I want to thank you guys who share your story. For you guys who are not sharing, I mean, honestly, man, this isn't a session to, you know, belittle what you've gone through. It, that's not what this is about. This is sharing so that people know new people know some of you guys been here for a while you've seen the changes you've seen it and if what i was saying wasn't true i don't think you just keep hanging in it it's just you know yeah some of you have excuse me some of you have gone through so much hell, so much hell and high water that you have thought of giving up. People that battle depression. Most people battle depression. You find it hard to believe that somebody out here is that ruthless, that cold blooded, that trifling that cruddy, that arrogant, that cutthroat. You find it hard to believe. But the narcissist will make a believer out of you. 
they will make a believer out of you. Goodness knows they, they've all succeeded at that, making us believers. You know, we believed in love. We believed in a good relationship. You know, thanks, Roxanne. Hey, Jana. <clears throat> we all had that in common, you know, dealing with a narcissistic situation. A narcissistic partner we've dealt with it and it to you know it, it has been the most trying situation in your life it has been the most trying situation in your life and you made it you see that and you made it through made it through with flying colors you made it. Guys, you know, again, I appreciate all of the conversations because they give me so much closure with everything. And that's the reason I'm able to speak to you the way I am. I, I see it when you guys, you know, can't go no contact. I, I see the repercussion. I see the price you pay for not being able to let go. And every night, I hope to inspire you when you feel like you can't. I just can't stop talking to that person. I just can't leave them alone. I just can't. You know, I, I'm glad that as I have a platform here to help you see that no matter what you do, you ain't getting through this and staying in contact with that person. It's not going to happen for you. It is not going to happen for you. As bad as you want it to happen, as bad as you want to keep on, as bad as you want that united front with a narcissist, as bad as you want to be able to communicate amicably, why do we have to be the circus show? See, that's part of the reason that a narcissist is never going to give you that closure, that peace, that you want because they know it embarrasses you. The narcissist knows it embarrasses you. It embarrasses you to know that your relationship, you're the only one that can't find an amicable way to deal with one another. Why can't we just be amicable? Why can't we just be friends? Why can't we just work this out? The narcissist knows that's what you want to do. They know how much pain, how much dissatisfaction, how much disappointment it brings you because you are trying to perfect your life. And the narc knows it. You trying to live right. You trying to be right. The narc knows it. So they've set things up in your life in a way where you cannot. They say, ah, na, 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 na. Nah, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't set your life up the way you want to because I'm here throwing it off throwing you off. I'm here making sure that we, there will be no peace. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No peace. No. And they know you don't want to be the one. You don't want to be the one who couldn't get, have an amicable relationship when they, everybody's around to sitting around, you know, at the cookout talking about, you know, their ex or whatever. And people are like, oh, no, no, I mean, actually, we still cool, you know. You know, as a matter of fact, we best, we better friends now than we were when we was together. You want to be like that. The narc knows it. The narcissist knows you want to be that way. Like, hey, you know what? We didn't, it didn't work out, but hey, let's at least be friends. Let's be adult about it, right? <laughs> nope. The narc is saying, listen, the only way we're going to be friends is if you have 
absolutely no zero nada any any control you won't have any control in it okay you won't have any validation in it you will listen the only way you will have peace with the narcissist is when you submit to their credibility when, unless you submit to being the doormat, the punching bag. That's the only, and you still will never have peace. You will never have peace with them. Okay? There will never be peace with them. Hey, Lady Virgo, you won't. There will be no peace. That's how the narcissist stays on your mind, because if they don't if they don't give you peace, then there's always something in the background in your mind saying, like, why can't I make this situation peaceful? No, no, no. If you try to make peace, they're going to try to have a relationship with you again, but not a real relationship. They just want to make you think that they want a relationship because as soon as you fall for the bait, <laughs> yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. As soon as you fall for the bait, they're laughing in your face again. No, no, I wasn't saying that. No, this is over between us, please. No, no, don't, don't get confused, okay? They will clear it up for you. What's up, MJ? Hey, Queenless. They will clean it up for you. Hey, Alicia and Kimberly Ortiz, y'all came in late. Lady Virgo, hit the like button. Mm -hmm. Y'all came in late, hit the like button. Yeah, man. <clears throat> you like that Ike Turner? Tia, Tia's kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I see you, MJ. Yeah, man, that peace that you that you crave, the peace that you crave in your life, the peace that we all crave. That narcissist knows you crave peace. The narcissist knows that you want you do anything to have peace. They know it. You're not going to get it with them. You're not going to get the validation. You're not. You know, and I, and I want to help out. So I want to help somebody out tonight, you know, and just say it, it's not going to change. It's not going to change until you get this one thing through your mind. And that is. You got to cut that person off. I know you think that, you know, X, Y, Z, Y, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, if five years later hasn't taught you. By now, five years later, hasn't taught you. Nothing can, nothing can, nothing will. You know, I'm just keeping it 100 with you. We all have our, you know, <clears throat> we all have this thing that, you know, well, I'll figure this out. I appreciate you guys sharing your stories. Again, but you haven't figured it out yet, have you? Still in the same place, man. It's like your life has advanced. Your age has advanced five years. And your life is still back on that same day. You have not advanced. Because you got, you still got all your eggs in that basket. And that devil stomped those eggs. Yeah. It's not going to change. It's not going to get better. I know, you know, many of us have tried to go back and, you know, we have. We've tried to go back. We have, man. 
I, I get it. You know, y'all. Some, sometimes we we go back to the narc and be like, man, forget that hurry. Oh, they crazy. I don't want to hear that mess. I'm in love over here. <laughs> I get it, man. I get it. I get it. I want to see us in love, man. I do. I do, man. I just want you to get it the right way. That's all. That's all. Just get it the right way, man. Gail. Mwah. Thank you so much for that super chat. Appreciate you getting us started. I get it, guys. I do. I know what we I know we want what's best. I know. Hey Anna. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know we want what's best. You know, and you can have it. You can. You can have it. Queen V said, I've remarried the narc a second time and almost didn't make it out. Same. Who good God. Good God Almighty. Girl, you just blew me out of the water with that one. <clears throat> you you married a narc twice? Good God Almighty. Like, like, okay. What sometimes we don't know what it is though. Sometimes we don't know what it is, and you know, we sometimes we don't know who it is, what it is, and what we're dealing with, and we go back into it. And you know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna say this. I, I had that friend of mine one time. Hey, let's let's get divorced and start all over again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because the narcissist is such a train wreck. The relationship is such a disaster that you say, okay, man, you know what? We, we Maybe we did. We got off on the wrong foot. That's what it was. We got off on the wrong foot. Let's get divorced and, and re-court one another. Do this all over again the right way because that's how blind we are. God, that's how blind we become for love. We want it so bad. And that narc knows it. That narc knows we want it so bad that we're willing. I'm, 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 listen, I was willing to do it at one time. It was, I was talking that crazy stuff, man. I was smoking that angel dust that the narc was selling. <laughs> you know, let's just try it again. Let's get married again. So maybe the second time, good God Almighty. Thank God. Lord, I thank you for not letting me do nothing like that. I thank you. Good God. Wow, man. I can't, I can't, and I say, I say that now because I feel like, wow, I can't imagine. I can't imagine myself doing something like that again. Like, wow. Whoo, man. Oh, my God. No. No, uh-uh, I can't do it. No, I don't want to. Mm -mm. That, that's a painful thought to be with the narc again and married again, stuck with that, feeling stuck with it. You guys, when you get, listen, guys, when you're married to a narcissist, you feel, listen, you don't feel like you're in a relationship, number one. Because I know that most of the most of us who, who are not married to it think that if we marry, it's going to be different. I swear, I swear to God, man, I swear to God, it's going to be your worst mistake you ever made. I had to say it like that, y'all. Yeah, I don't usually swear. I had to on that. One. I swear to God, it's the worst mistake you ever going to make in your life. I swear to you, it's going to be the worst mistake you ever made in your life. You want to marry that thing? You wanting to marry a narcissist really is a, that's a call for help. Wanting to marry a person and you know they're a narcissist, that's a call for help. That's a call for an intervention because there's nothing healthy about that. There is absolutely nothing that is healthy about marrying a narcissist, let alone marrying it again. Married it twice. You married it twice. Why? 
Why? For what? It, it has, it, it brings nothing good to your life. You to live a life of disappointment, to live a life of sadness, to live a life always wanting. Listen, one thing for sure about living with a narcissist, living a life with a narcissist is every day. Listen to me. Every day, every one of y'all that's thinking about staying with that crap, thinking about marrying that thing. If you're thinking about marrying that thing, man, just go ahead to somebody else's channel straight up. Go to somebody else. Because I don't want you to be saying I was listening to her, yo. And I went on and married the narc anyway. Just go ahead and get out. Go ahead and, and, and I ain't, you know, I ain't trying to be rude about it. I'm just saying real talk. Go to another channel and follow that, man. Follow what they're saying. Because if you want to be married to that, man, seriously, man, I don't even know why you're here. I don't even know why you're here. You, you, you can't like yourself. There's no way you can like yourself to say, I still want to be married to it. I do, though. I still want to be in pain every day. I still want to be disappointed because you think that it's not going to be that disappointment with you. But if we was married, it won't be that. You a lie. It is going to be that. It's going to be worse. <coughs> it's going to be worse. It's going to be work. It's going to be a hell you ain't ready for. It's going to be a hell you're not ready for. You think that because the narc is telling, telling you about their ex that you're going to be everything their ex wasn't. You lying to yourself. They told you a lie. They stroked your ego. They told you what you wanted to hear. The narcissist told you what you wanted to hear. You believe it. You believe it. We all believe it. They're telling you something, how great you are, how you save them, how you're the best thing to ever come into their life. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but what they meant was, you're the best thing to ever come into my life because you don't know who I am right now. You don't know what I'm about to drag you through. They're not telling you that because they really like you, like they care about you. I mean, that devil hates you, hates your guts, and going to prove how much they hate you. Not only do they hate you, they're going to prove it to you. Some of us walking around hurt, butt hurt, because they got somebody else. Like that's something new. Like that's something new. Man, I can't believe you cheated on me. I don't believe that. And they and then got the nerve to think they're not cheating on the new supply. You really believe they're not cheating on the new supply, too. You think we do? Yes, we do. We all of us thought that. How this joker gonna go over here with the new supply? And, 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 and they loyal to them and was dogging me the whole time. And you believe that. You the only one to believe it too. You're the only one to believe it. it ain't a time in the narc's life that they ain't lining stuff up, man. You crazy? You think a narc was, would risk their life like that? That is a narcissist risking their life going no contact. Having one supply. You must be crazy if you believe something. Like, they're going to have one supply. They can only reach out to one person. You have lost your mind if you believe something like that. They are not. Okay, they're never going to do that. They didn't do it for you. They sure, and they damn sure ain't gonna do it for this new person. For what? What does a narcissist have to gain by being devoted to somebody? That they're gonna dog. They already know they're gonna dog them. They know they're liars by nature. Their nature is to lie first. What do they have to gain by doing right by somebody? What does the narcissist have to gain by doing right by you? 
They got your devotion in it, whether they do right by you or not. They don't believe that you're going to leave them. For all of y'all that think otherwise. That's right. Letters of the flock said it. Their love language is lies. Sick thumb. Well, thanks for the super chat. Sick thumb said this chat is so helpful because I've worn out family and friends with the narc story. <laughs> but in order to stay away, I need to talk about it. Thank you so much. That's what it's here for. Sick thumb, that, that's exactly why it's here. Because that's what we do. We will wear people out. We will wear people out. Everybody that's talking to us, everybody got something to say to us. All we want to talk about is the no, hey man, but you know, people start running away from you. They see you come in. Whoa, 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 hell, hold, hold, hold a second, hold a second. I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> hold up. And you just want to get it off your chest, and it's every day. It's every day. It's every day. You're trying to get it off your chest, and they like, and they're trying to tell you, just leave that fool alone. <laughs> just leave that fool alone, man. Everything will be all right if you just leave them alone. They're trying to tell us. We ain't hearing it, though. We are not listening to it. We're not. What's up, Marlon? Marlon said, catching them cheating is the worst because I blame myself because I knew better. I didn't listen to my conscience to leave that dirt ball credit dog alone. There you go. There you go. That's why it hurt so bad because you didn't trust yourself. When your intuition was telling you the whole time, this is about to be ugly. Mm-hmm. That, that, that feeling you got churning in your stomach, that feeling we won't listen to when we're with the narcissist. Man, you getting signals. Mm -mm -mm. You can't eat. You, you feel it churning and you're scared to bring it up to the narc because you know they're going to deny it. You know they're going to deny it. You know they're going to deny everything you said. Then they're going to call you crazy because you didn't catch them in the act. And even if you caught them in the act, they're going to say you crazy. First thing they're going to say is you crazy. You jump out the bed. You jump from up under the bed. They're going to say you crazy. You are crazy. I don't believe you did this. <laughs> I don't believe you had the unmitigated gall to sit under this bed and wait till my lover comes over here so we can make love and you catch me in the middle of the act and jump out and say you're caught. We wasn't doing nothing now. I was acting. I was acting because I knew you was under there the whole time. I wanted to give you a show. If you think that narc is ever going to just confess, tell the truth, Listen, you can y'all remember that old uh movie with uh Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise? Hmm. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't handle the truth. You can't. Miss CFP said that the gaslighting is sickening, and it is. It is sickening. The gas lighting is sickening. <laughs> the narc, the narc fairy said, the narc is the crack and we be smoking. <laughs> we do. We do, y'all. We do, man. We know they lying. We know they lying. We know that they're being deceptive. We know they don't want to talk. They don't want to talk. You want to talk to the narc every day. You want to ask them about that conversation. You want to not ask them about that phone number, about that who they were text messaging in the middle of the night 
why they were in the bathroom at two o'clock in the morning texting why every why this why that why we ain't doing it on a regular basis you know that's another thing you ain't getting with a narcissist you ain't getting no loving on no consistent basis they like man well whatever, whatever. <laughs> narcs are like man whatever using this as a weapon mm-hmm using it as a weapon mm-hmm everything in your life is going to be off track ladies you already know your ph gonna be off that ph gonna be off every single day don't kiss the narc in the mouth all right y'all already know if you don't know now you know never kiss them don't kiss them lips don't let that tongue touch that other tongue no kisses in the mouth, man. Kiss their shirt or something. Mm. Something like that. It never in the mouth. No. Keep your mouth away from that mouth, okay? That's right, Shalom. <clears throat> Don't do it because, you know, when you see their other supplies, which you will, you will see them. You know, that's that's who you're tasting. Yeah, that person. And, and let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, Shaw. I know. You, call, you called it on that one. But let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> Listen. I'm saying... Not only should you never kiss a narc in the mouth, but the reason why is because the person they told you never, I would never, you, know, you would never catch me with that. That's who is in their mouth. The person they telling you, oh, it'll never happen. That ain't even my type. That I would never. I, it's, you crazy. The person they telling you, you crazy. That's the person that's in their mouth and everywhere else on them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right, Karen. That's right. <laughs> that's who that's who it is. And you know, you know, we guys, we trying so bad, man. We're trying our hardest. We trying with everything in us. To rationalize this, to make this make sense. We are, man. We're trying to make this make sense. And you can't. You cannot. You cannot make this make sense, guys. You can't. And they know it. And you spend years, years trying to make it make sense. Trying to get them to do right. Trying to get them to act right. Try, waiting for them to get too old to act like they're acting. Narcs are middle age now. Narcs out here, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. You got 70 plus year old narcs out here still chasing everything they can chase. And you still holding on, trying, like, good gracious, you 70, how you still running, chasing people? Cause ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. You got that. Listen, you you lying to yourself if you think that their age is going to stop them. You lying to yourself. You thinking one day? Come on, one day. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Guys, listen, I see a few of y'all got people in there in their 50s, 60s, 70s. And see, I'm, I'm 55 myself. And I, honestly, man, I, it's embarrassing for me to say that. You know that I'm single? I ain't gonna lie. As a man, it makes, that's, it's kind of embarrassing to me. Because I feel like, I, you know, it should have been, I should have made a better choice. I do. Looking back at it, you know, I know hindsight's 2020, but looking back at it, I feel like, man, come on, bro. See, guys, this is where you're going to be later. 
this is like this is gonna be your mindset later. Like, I really did that. <laughs> I must have been smoking crack. I must have been smoking some. I must have been on some type of hallucinogen to be with somebody like that. I don't know what you know. I know you know what it was. I know how it started. I know how I got there. But even though I was young, I still I still got to take responsibility for it. I don't have an excuse why I was there and why I was there that long. I don't have an excuse for either one. Other th other than I was just pure, it was pure, it was total neglect of my values, my inner voice, me not listening to that inner voice, me not letting God direct me, not letting God do with my life what he was what he wanted to do it was all me making those choices and me making those bad choices and then trying to right the wrong you know by bringing it to god you know like really and, and god's sitting there looking at me like really bro i ain't bring this mess i ain't give you that no you chose that <laughs> and i'm gonna let you get everything that come with it that's exactly how god treated me Hey man, you that's what you want, that's what you're choosing. You sure solid. Then, then you, you go ahead and roll with it. Then you roll with it for as long as you can. Thank you so much, Nark Fairy. You are wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Appreciate it. Listen, I made the move, I made the mistake, I made that crazy choice, and I'm telling you that after making that choice. I feel like I deserved everything I got from the north. You hear me? I do. It feels so good for me to be able to confess that. I deserve. The north told me, you deserve everything I do to you. <laughs> Whoo, man. The crud was no nonstop endless. And I have to agree. I totally agree. I deserve everything that I went through because what I went through, it was based on my own rebellion. It was based on my total rebellion. So because I rebelled against what I knew to be right, I went against it. I take total responsibility for it everything there i was wrong i should never have been there it, it showed that devil showed its horns immediately so i can honestly and openly say that there's no reason i should have been there other than my own rebellion toward what was right see you gotta have a rebellion towards what's right to stay with the narcissist because ain't no right when you're with them, okay? You're definitely not <laughs> doing the right thing, okay? Whoo! Mm -hmm. Thanks for the super chat, uh, Sick Thong. Sick Thong said, my prayer is that God keeps me on a short leash. And that's how you really got to, that's how I think I had to look at it, you know? I said, Lord, I'm not picking nobody else. You picking the next one. You picking the one for me because no, sir. No, sir. That's right, Bill Gates. Narc equals demon. The same thing. Devil. It's the same thing. That's right. Put an equal sign between them. Again, you know, my confession is that, yeah, I deserved it. I deserved it because, you know, and I say I deserved it because I knew better. I knew it wasn't right. I knew it didn't feel right. I knew that I did, it didn't feel good. It didn't feel like a relationship. I knew it wasn't what a relationship was supposed to be. But we always get caught up in that emotional side where we just say, well, you know, maybe the person will grow to learn how to love. And they're not going to. They did not. They're not going to. They're just looking for the next person to dog. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. I know 
Did some of y'all think they went on to be happy in a relationship somewhere? I was I, I was talking to someone, a young lady, just before you know the show tonight. And like I said, that's why I appreciate everybody for reaching out, you know. And she explained, you know, how the narc had moved on, got new, got a new supply, got a couple of new supplies, you know. Moved on. The the newest narc, you know, bought this guy a Bentley. See what y'all be doing, ladies? Went out there and bought that fool a Bentley. Good gracious. <laughs> bought that fool a Bentley, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, see, the average one of us would have been just, we would have lost it. We would have, if, if that was your ex and their new supply bought them a Bentley, you would have lost, you would lose it. You would, oh my God. You, you think it was you. You think you were the problem. You would. We all, we all, and I ain't going to say I would because I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, no. That fool bought you a Bentley. Shh. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> he, he figure it out, though. She bought him a Bentley. And now he's in prison because he tried to kill her. He beat her and beat her and has, and has been beating her basically the whole time he'd been with her. And now they're reaching out to the exes of him that he beat. All of them. One got away. One got away. One of them saw it in him and got out of there. Got out of Dodge. Now they're trying to pull the rest of them together. You know, he's in jail without bond. But Somebody buying you a car like that and make you think that y'all got to be happy. But you got to be happy. How you going to have a Bentley? Somebody just bought you a Bentley? And you beat her to death? How? Who, who would do that? Who would do that, ladies and gentlemen? Who would do that? She bought that fool whatever he wanted. Bought that fool a Bentley, and he tried to take her. He tried to unalive her. No, she not. She not. He he's in jail without bond. They they putting his history together now. Cause yeah, they really trying to, they trying to tighten him up. Give him what he you know. Give him that karma. They working on that. That remedy for him right now. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what I'm but 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 if that was you, you you y'all believe that stuff, man. You believe because somebody went out and bought them something and they buying all these gifts and they on these vacations and they doing this and they doing that, that their life is so incredible. <coughs> Excuse me. Y'all really be believing their life is so incredible. Nah, they they happy over there. They about to get married. They in love. They all over the internet. You know. You know. They all over the internet with it, you know. And no, this is just some regular people, yo. Just some regular people. This ain't no, this ain't no, well, you know, the guy, he is known. I don't, I don't want to say his name, you know. I don't think y'all, you know, unless y'all, unless y'all fight fans, y'all wouldn't know. Him. But, you know, you know, he, he doing his thing. He's out there doing his thing. She's she's spoiling him. She's spoiling this dude. And she's doing the most. 
She's doing the absolute most. New clothes. What you want, baby? You want this? You want that? Whatever. He going upside her head on a regular basis. I know. I know the guy. You know. He in this area, you know. <laughs> you know, like I said, we have this impression that because somebody bought a gift or somebody did this for that person, y'all know just like if y'all saw your ex buy the new supply, or I'm sorry, if you saw the new supply buy your ex a new Bentley. Ladies, if you saw your ex, and it wasn't a new Bentley, though. It wasn't new. Still, it was a Bentley. I don't care. You saw your ex buy your, you saw your ex get a new Bentley from the new supply. You would think that they, that he must be treating her in crime. He must be doing something ain't nobody never did to her. Their relationship, wow, so it must have been me. You'd be blaming yourself. You'd be sitting there saying, it was you. It must be me. It must be, so I'm just messed up in the head. Because this fool, they they just bought this fool a Bentley. Good gracious. And he put her in the hospital for it. Put her in the hospital. Put her in a heart. I mean, beat her insane. Try to beat her brains out. But I'm saying, if you're watching, fortunately, this, this young lady wasn't watching his story. She was contacted by one of the exes because they're literally putting a team together because they ready to tighten him up. They ready to give him what he's supposed to get. They they trying to they trying to put a crew in there like hey he done beat all of us up you know and again and, and fellas that would be the same way with us if somebody bought your ex a Bentley put her in a Bentley man you be thinking like whoa okay maybe she got one this time that's what I be I be like man she called a sucker this time well goodness gracious she worked her mojo that time. That fool don't see nothing. <laughs> Guys, when you're dealing with the narc, it's all black or white. One or the other. There is no gray area. That you either believe everything or you believe nothing. That's what y'all got to start seeing with narcissism, man. You either believe it all or you believe nothing. And like I said, I told y'all that because... I know how we are. We look at, you know, finance. We look at money and stuff like that. And we'll give the NARC. We'll give the NARC credit and think that they got it together. This woman done put you in new clothes, put money in your pocket, got you a driving around in a Bentley. And all you know how to do is go upside her head. Again, ladies, if that was you watching, that was you watching, you would be believing the lie. You would have believed that lie that they were happy, that life must be good, my life must be incredible. This woman up bought this guy this car. And taking care of them? There's no way. There's no way. Uh uh. <laughs> there you go, Nikki Wu. There you go. They, they got when they got to go, they got to go. Guys, I'm t I'm telling you this story to let you know again. 
contrary to whatever you believe that the narc is doing, that where they are, that they are somewhere they've escaped karma. Again, you lying to yourself again. You lying to yourself again. You're lying to yourself again. That's right, Libby. When, when you're in pain and you're still healing, mm -hmm, you believe every trap they deliberately put up. You putting the, they putting the traps up just for you. It's smoke screens everywhere. You don't see it. You don't, you just want to believe that and you you embrace that pain. I'm just, oh man, it must have been me. Start bang, blaming yourself. That's right, Manuel. It's an illusion. It's all an illusion, man. You can and it, and, and it proved that story proves to you again that no matter what you do for them, no matter what you do for them. And you know how he met this particular woman? Because she lived across the street from his ex-woman. The other new supply. Moved, got right with somebody in the neighborhood. Got right with somebody in the neighborhood. Somebody that you see every day. <clears throat> went over there and tried to destroy that woman's life. But if you're the, on the outside looking in, you would believe that. Nah, man. Nah, you would believe. You would believe. They're so happy. Oh, my goodness. They look so happy together. Look at them. And he beaten everybody up. He's beaten everybody up. And again, ladies, gentlemen, that's why I say I appreciate when y'all share your stories because it gives everybody that inside. You, we just want to be a fly on the wall to see what that life is like. What are they really going through in there? Because somebody start hand, somebody hand you keys to a Bentley. <clears throat> in your mind, that situation is pretty damn good. It's pretty solid, right? You ain't expecting to get beat within an inch of your life, like within the, the, the next two weeks. Like, really? No, we don't think like that. We believe that, you know, uh, the situation with a narcissist, no, we believe in our truth. We truly believe in our minds that, no, nah, man, that situation, they had to be happy. Look at them. They, they got a new car. They got new Bentley. They look happy over here to me. I'm, and, and look, and we sitting here struggling. <laughs> we sitting here struggling. They, this joker just driving a Bentley. Ain't working nowhere. Okay? Ain't working nowhere driving a Bentley. Yeah, we thinking that it's, you know, everything's sweet. We do. We truly believe everything is sweet. We believe that, you know, oh, man. They really, they must be working together and they must be doing this and they must be doing that. And no, nah, no, they're not. No, they're not. Mm -mm. No, nah, they're not. They're not. They are not. Yeah, Alicia, I think so. I think they will keep him in there. The, well, they got him. They he in there on no bond. He ain't. He doesn't have a bond. So you know, yeah, they you know they hooking him up. 
They hooking him up. My point again is we would have thought, y'all would have thought that, man. If y'all would have saw your ex getting spoiled like that with somebody, half of y'all would have been sick. This joke, you got no what? I don't, I don't believe it. Your ex pull up to your house in a Bentley, you'd be like, whoa. You'd be sick. New clothes, got money. See, me, I'd be like, who, who they steal it from? But still, don't pull up to my house. Even if you got one, no matter what you got, don't pull up to my house. <laughs> okay? I don't, I don't need to even be around it. No. No. Just go enjoy your life, wherever it is. Just keep on enjoying over there. Yeah. That's right, Libby. Life talks to us if we pay attention. So at the gym the other day and saw the on and off boyfriend of, of a narc. I've known my whole life, and that man looked like he's been through hell. Yeah, probably took a lot of people through hell. That's what it looks like. Yeah. That's what it looks like, people. That's right. The North Korea said they have a dark presence. <laughs> Man, everything about the North is, is just, it's dark. It's ugly. Yeah, Alicia, she healing. No, no, no she doesn't. No, she doesn't. She probably will soon. You know, like I said, it's it's a collaboration of you know they're trying to put the women together from his past, you know, to really make this case solid because he has a history of it. You know, guys, and again, and and you know what? Yeah, let me say this to y'all at while we on the topic. All of y'all think you got it worse. All of you think you got it worse than the next person. Don't get it. All of y'all. Now, all the dirt that this dude has done, and he's beat up the women that he's dealt with in the past now. No question. But he ain't never beat one of them up like he did this one. I mean, he beat this one. He tried to take her out of here. When they get older, they get worse. A lot of us don't believe they get worse. A lot of us don't believe they get worse. He beat her within an inch of her life. We don't, we just want to believe that. No, no, man, you know, it don't be like this or it don't be like. See, and then another thing I want y'all to understand too and look at. Y'all don't see men asking the question, well, what did she do? Because men ain't with no stuff like that. No. Men ain't with no stuff like that. You're going to go ahead and try to literally take somebody out. And for what? What she do? You, you live in her house. She taking care of you. Don't bought you a Bentley. Good gosh. <laughs> I'm just, I got to keep saying it. Bought this fool a Bentley? Yes. And what does he turn around and do? The one that did the most, he treated the worst. The one that did the most, he treated the worst. Every time they get a new supply, they're grooming that new supply to do more than what you did. Yeah. They're trying to get now, and they're not always able to do more than you did. But they try. That's right, Miss CFPP. Did he bite the hand that fed him? Whew. 
would you say, Shaw? They get worse. That's right. They get worse. I had a 62-year-old. I got it so bad, I couldn't stand to hear his voice. We just run out the room when he came home. Oh, my goodness. Very bitter, angry, enraged, old narc is hell. That's what they are. Uh-oh, Lady Virgo going to court next week. They never thought that I would say or feel this way, but I'm excited because I'm tired of this. Part. There you go. There you go. All, and that's the thing. That, that process wears you down. That process wears you down because, guys, I mean, I, in, in all honesty, a divorce for us, it is hard. It's painful. I don't care what phase you are at with the narc. It's painful. And you're going to feel it. And, and I don't want you to feel some type of way, you know, because it does hurt you for real. And the reason that it does hurt you is because you're a real person. You didn't get married to that person to divorce them. And you do feel like, you know, a part of you feels like you failed. A part of you feel like you lost. So, I mean, it happens. It happens that way. That narc knows what they're doing. That's right. That's right, Lady Virgin. He failed. And you know why. You know why. You know how. You know why. You know, ain't, ain't no winning in that. And, and there's, the thing about it is, guys, we got to start looking at a relationship as, can I win with this person? Can I win with this person? There go China. The K and J show. Yeah, man. That's all it's going to be is loss. That's right. Lady Virgo, listen, you, you know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> at the end of the day, you did what you were supposed to do. Guys, when you put your all into something, you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to do that. Put your all into it. Put your all into it so when it's over, it's not over because of you. That's the regret that everybody here is dreads facing. See, you think that you re re regret the loss, the love, and all of this and that. The biggest thing is regret, living with regret. A narcissist lives with regret every day. Not only the regret of what they did to you, the regret of the decisions they've made their entire life. A narcissist is sitting back every single day. They regret what they did. They feel that loss every single day. And then they convince themselves the same way we convince ourselves that this is staying with this dirt, this, this crap is the right thing. Working to keep this together is the right thing. The same way we lie to ourselves like that, the narc also lies to their selves the same way and say, you know what? I know I got something good. The narc will tell, tell themselves every day, I know I got somebody that's good. I know somebody, I got somebody that's solid. I know I got somebody that got my back, but I think I can do better. <laughs> I can do better. I know I can do better. Look at me. This church person picked me up and all these other opportunities out here, I can do better. And I'm talking about the married narcs. <laughs> Them the ones, I'm, I'm talking about the ones that's married. You know, the rest of them, they, they, don't even, they don't even care. The married narcs look at it like, oh, I could do better. I know I could do better. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Every single day, guys, that narc lives a life of regret. Every single day. That dude I was just telling y'all about, he's sitting in jail right now. Y'all think he regrets what he did to the to the women of his past? It wasn't just the woman who bought him the Bentley. 
That's just one of his victims. That's just one. He beat all of them. That's who he is. But the, the last one, she got it the worst. The last one got it the worst. The last one got it the worst. Last one, a lot of times, was a lot of us. We thought it was going to be us. We thought we were going to be that person to finish life with the norm. Man, you just don't know what you dumped. Some of y'all don't know what you got out of the hell you averted. Some of you don't even understand what you got away from. <laughs> Say the K and J show, Harry. Yo, did you get a hover? I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it, man. It's it's sad. It's sad. It's sad, man. It's sad. they sick, man. They are sick. I, I'm gonna tell y'all this though. You know the hovers that I get. I get worried when I get a hover. I do. I get worried because I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I doing something? Am I doing something somewhere? Where is my boundary, you know, fading at? Because what would make this person, you know, man. Write your testimony said, just got a just got cursed out by my narc husband for hours. Hours, though. <laughs> he would say sorry, but his pity is for himself, not for the abuse the kids and I keep getting. Praying God shows me a way to safely get out. There you go. Start planning the way out. That ain't no way to live, man. Especially in front of the kids. I remember that. I remember being around that right there. I was that kid in the house at one time, me and my brother, you know, stepfather. You know what I'm saying? I know. Joker come home from work, drunk. We watching the Cosby show. This fool come through the door and everybody just freeze like, oh, man, here we go. Here we go. He come downstairs. He see us. See us enjoying our evening. Watching the Cosby show, right? House clean, everybody homework done, everything straight. And you, ah, hold up. He drunk, done messed up the money. So now he want to start something with us. Come downstairs, turn the TV off, turn the light on. We're going to talk. Again, what, what now? What are we going to talk about? What we talking about tonight? Y'all don't appreciate me. Appreciate what, dude? What is it to appreciate? Huh? <laughs> what is it to appreciate, bro? You got my mama working three jobs to pay these bills around here while you go to work getting high every day on cocaine. Yes, I said it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, gamble his money away. He got ten thousand dollars worth of lottery tickets in his dag on cat. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've seen that. I've seen that in life, man. I've seen that. Yes, I have. I've I've dealt with that before. Joker come home and just start in on us for nothing. For nothing. We just chilling. We just chilling, enjoying, enjoying the Cosby Show, and he just, I, man, oh man, Whew, what's up, Lady B? Lady B UK, that's right. Tomorrow morning, y'all. Tomorrow morning, that's right. Me, 
on Supreme FM. Y'all better watch it. I'm going to put the link in the chat and I'm going to put the link on my page again. So y'all can watch me and hear, hear me out tomorrow morning on Supreme FM, London's number one talk radio show. Hey, yeah. Man, listen, guys. Listen, if, if there's one thing I can give y'all, man, from this narcissism stuff, man, if it's one thing that I can truly give you, let it just be that you left here with a clear mind that it, once you figure out this person's a narcissist, you have no chance at anything good. Nothing in your life is going to be good. You have no chance at anything. And anything that you, even when you do think you have something that's good with the narc, they're going to destroy every bit of it. All of it. Donna Cunningham. Mwah. Thanks for that super chat. Appreciate you. They're going to destroy all of it. Not some of it. All of it. <laughs> China said, I'm going to tell y'all, life is beautiful on the other side, man. I'm trying to tell you. Audrey said, Joshua, I couldn't either. And better yet, my ex would call me when he went went to work at 5 a.m. and want to stay on the phone until he got to the driveway by 342. Goodness gracious. All day long. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just beat you up with it all day. That's right, good versus evil. Mm, mm, mm. Like I said, y'all, if you learn nothing else here, one thing you're going to learn right here is how to go no contact. <laughs> you're going to learn that what you think you're missing, you not missing. Because that's what makes you want to take them back again. Because you think you're missing something. Guys, you think that you're missing. You think you're going to miss out. You think that all the work you don't put into the narc, right? And I know how that is. All the work you put into the narc, you think that the new supply is to go enjoy everything you done bought this bum up from nothingness and turned it into something and somebody else gets to enjoy all of your hard work all the fruit of your labor wrong <laughs> wrong again my friend you have lied again you have lied again because a narcissist no, they're not going to the new supply to treat them good. They're not going to the new supply to treat them well. They're not going to the new supply because they love them. The same reason they didn't come to you because they wanted to treat you good. The narcissist didn't deal with you because they love you. They didn't run to you because they had plans of treating you well, because they had all of these dreams and admiration. Listen, aspirations to one day have this wonderful, loving, awesome family together, this unit with you, this, this bond that's unbreakable. That's not why they chose you. It is not. They chose you because they wanted to abuse you. They chose you because they wanted to destroy you. They chose you because you dealt with a monster. They chose you because you allowed yourself to be chosen. They chose you because you did not have boundaries. They chose you because you did not have boundaries. They chose you because they want your soul in hell with theirs. And while you were with them, your soul was in hell with theirs. While you were with the narcissist, 
your soul was in hell just like theirs. Yes, it was. You were right there with them. Mm-hmm. They're not going to go anywhere and do right by anybody. You can keep feeling, you know, like you missed something, this great opportunity, because this person is one day they're going to get it together. They're going to be a great spouse for somebody. You a lie. You are a liar. If you even think that, you lie. The narc went somewhere else to do right. They get married. I ain't gonna Yeah, I was listening to uh, Bill Bellamy said a joke about the new marriage. He said, man, marriage is so fast now. By the time they get to the reception. <laughs> oh, what? What? Oh, now, see, I knew I knew this wasn't going to work. Man, no, nah, no. Nah, we're going to see my lawyer tomorrow. At the reception. <laughs> it's already off. Yeah, man. If you think the North went somewhere to do right, you a lie. If you think they went somewhere to, you know, make a family and do the right thing with the family. They doing stuff to make you mad. That's it. They couldn't get to you any other way. Okay. They couldn't. They couldn't get to you any other way, so Hey, let me just go out here and let me do this with somebody else. That'll get your attention. Yeah, that's going to make you feel some type of way. Watching me out here with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Yeah. That's all you get when you deal with one. You're going to get a bunch of stuff you don't want. The narcissist formed a weapon against you that did not prosper. It will not prosper. It cannot prosper. That narcissist will never, will never get it together. Now, some of y'all want to waste another year five years, 10 more years. The place you're at when you're no longer with the narcissist and you still worrying about what they're doing, that means that you're not even in a relationship with them anymore and they're still stealing your years away from you. You're not even in a relationship anymore and they're stealing time from you. Trying to say it. we think they change because we willfully ignore what we saw and how they made us feel. They are not happy because they change victims, not demons. Cool. Boy, China is getting ready, man. She getting ready. That woman gonna do some big things on this internet. No question. They change victims. They didn't change demons. They, if anything, they added some new ones. If anything, they added some new demons. Yeah, that's why they come home acting different because they got a new demon. Yeah, and the new demon got a name too. Somebody they met today or yesterday. A narcissist start acting funny at home just because they got a new phone number. Somebody got their number. Somebody they flirting with on Instagram or Facebook Messenger. They they ready to destroy everything y'all got just because somebody flirting with them. That's how far their ego 
goes out there. They really start believing that everybody wants them. See, I knew I could do better than you. That's how they really look at it. I knew I could do better than you. Somebody could like their picture, like their post, and they think that they read, they're looking at how they can replace you. <laughs> Victoria said, how do I spell crut ball and what is it? Well, Victoria, crut ball is spelled C-R-U-T-B-A-W-L. And a crut ball is a person that is no good. They've never been any good. This isn't somebody who was once good and turned bad, no. This is somebody who's never been any good. They love seeing people disappointed. A crook ball is somebody that does everything in their power to destroy the good. They do everything. They, they, these are people that are filled with jealousy to the point that they hate you. They hate your guts because you're you, because they did, they're not you, because they didn't grow up with your looks. They didn't grow up with your charisma. They didn't grow up knowing what you know. They didn't have, they weren't born with the things you were born with. They don't have that loving, kind forgiveness. No, they're cruddy, they're treacherous. These are people that were this is a snake. This is somebody that you bring around your family and friends and they start flirting with family and friends right in front of you. This is somebody that wants to destroy you, but they smile in your face like they're your friend. Yeah, yeah. They are the most trifling. They, they are only around you to, to inflict as much pain as humanly possible. That's it. They're weak individuals. They're devils. They're sorry. And I mean sorry in the sense of the word of being no good type of sorry. Not sorry as being empathetic, but they're sorry as, you know, not being good at anything except deception. They're only good at deceiving people. They're only good at lying. They're experts at lying. They're only good at being bad. That's a crut ball. Yes, that's a crut. They talk about you behind your back. They lie about you to everybody that will listen. Mm, mm, mm. Deidre Jones. Mm. Deidre Jones said, Nothing worse than an alcoholic narc. I don't know, DJ. I don't know, man. I mean, that alcohol, man. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know some of them alcoholic narcs want to start a fight and everything. But you got some some psycho narcs out here. That that really, man, it's they on another channel out here, man. You know, that covert. Malicious, vicious, crut ball narc. Mm, mm, mm. You got narcs out here, you know, trying to figure out which one is the worst, who is the worst. I mean, good luck, honestly. Wow, China said, imagine blowing up your life every time because you think starting over is going to be a punt. It's going to be upon a different outcome wow it's easier to change an address rather than behavior that's all. that's how narcs think too china that's exactly how they think that i can just go change the address because i ain't gonna do right and this fool about to start asking me to, and demanding that i do right and the narc is like nah buddy you can forget that that's right Libby. Maybe said, who else but a devil sets out to intentionally hurt a person who has done nothing but try to help them? Guys, think about that. Everybody in here, you've done everything you could, everything in, within your finances, everything emotional that you could do to support this narcissist, everything that you could do to, to bring intimacy, 
to bring love, to show them that you care, that you are there for them. You did everything. Okay, if you didn't do everything, put it in the chat. Put in the chat what you did not do for the NARC. That's what I want to hear from everybody real quick. Tell me something that you didn't do for the NARC that you would have done if you were able. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tell me what you didn't do. Hmm. Guys, I'm telling you, man, you gave everything you had. All gas, no brakes. Kimberly Austin T said, knuckled up. <laughs> Woo. Everything you could give the narcissist, man. Everything. You tried. You tried. And that's my point right there, man. You did all you could. Let let it let that let that just let that resonate with you. You know, I know we we love to resonate and say that, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it was me, maybe it was something I did, maybe it was something I couldn't, you know. We want to blame it on everything but what it is. You know, that's how we are. We want to blame it on everything that, except for what it truly is. And at the end of the day, guys, you did everything that you could. Trust that. <laughs> Orange Grove 55. Thanks for the super chat. <clears throat> Said, I'm a content creator, a former collaborator. Is doing a smear campaign against me. Best to ignore. You know, I have found on this internet, <laughs> it's true, man. It's, it's cruel, man. It's cruel on this internet. But yes, you know, you got to take the high road because people are going to talk about you because that's the internet. To some people, that's, that's life. Starting drama. It's life to some people, you know, and especially, you know, somebody that you have done, given opportunities to, you know, when it's somebody you've given an opportunity to, you know, you got to just look at it like, hey, you know what, <laughs> you go ahead and down that, that path you're going, because this is the thing, y'all, the thing that people on the internet don't see is, is that everybody's watching. Everybody's watching. They think that they'll come to your platform and steal everybody that's following you away if they just stab you in the back. That's a narcissist. That's how you know they came to you with ill intent and they want to destroy your platform. They want to just flatline you. So, you know, more often than not, for me, and I don't even, I was just like, hey, well, y'all saw the video with us, you know, and, you know, y'all make the judgment for yourself. You know, if that person feels slighted, you know, man, sometimes people get slighted because they're not getting that attention that they want. You know, that's right. That's right, Angela, uh, Alicia. Just let them do what they do. Having that argument on the internet, it's going to make you look bitter. I'm telling you. It's going to make you look bitter. All that back and forth, it's going to make you look bitter. Take the high road. Even if you address it, take the high road. You know, just say, hey, you know, it's unfortunate. I thought we was cool. You know what I'm saying? And leave it at that. You know what I mean? Going back and forth on that, uh, what you call it, man? Going back and forth on this internet and had people talking about you. So they're gonna be, they, you gonna have your followers looking at you like you crazy, you know? And it ain't worth it. It's not, you know. I ain't about to come in here and come out with no bag on nobody on here, cause I got the control. You know, what I'm saying? all I do is hit a button, and that person is no longer on here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I like to let people say what they have to say. Because I'd much rather use my sword, you know, 
I'd rather use my tongue to do the battle. You know, they, they're going to smear your name. They're going to say this. They're going to say that. You know, that's how people are. That's the new, that's the new internet. <laughs> you know, that's the new internet. People just love, love that drama, boy. It's better than them soap operas. Back in the day, you used to have to watch, the, watch TV for the soap operas. And Fridays, all the cliffhangers came on on Friday. I never got that. The soap operas, the, 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 it was like, it was so good back then. I, I never watched them. I, I never got it. I never, <laughs> never understood, like, what's this? Y'all want to see something that's drama? Why? I never got it. I get it now, though. Mm, tell them China. China said silence is the best option because they will keep coming for you until you break. That's right. And the first thing they're going to do is they're going to say, oh, you're not saying nothing because I'm telling the truth. That's the first thing they're going to say about you. Let them keep talking because eventually, guys, the one thing that all narcs never see. And that is time, the future. They living for today. They living in the moment. A narc lives in the moment. They're never thinking about what's going to happen in two weeks, in 30 days. They not even, when they left you for the new supply, they didn't, they're not thinking about their future. They're thinking about today. What I feel like right this moment. That's it. That's all they're thinking about, guys. That's it. Hey, guys. We're going to break it down for the night. Because, yeah. I got to get up tomorrow, too. Listen. For all my friends. In foreign countries. Foreign land. In my land. Yes, indeed. I want y'all to get out there. You don't have my book. <laughs> y'all going to say something else. You don't have my book, man. You need to go on Amazon. You need to go on Barnes and Noble. You need to get that book. Okay. A session with her, yo. It's your turn to win. Also, on tomorrow, a.m. 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or if you're in London for the London family, yes. Yes, indeed. Be back on the radio. Mm -hmm. Supreme FM. I'm leaving a link in the chat. I'm going to leave the link in the chat right after the show here. Yes, indeed. Yes, I am. Supreme FM, London's number one talk radio, community talk radio. Yes, indeed. Y'all check me out. We're going to be talking about this narc, man. They're getting it bad over there in the UK. Yeah. Yes. It's getting like it is over here, over there. Yes, indeed, man. Y'all have a wonderful night. Thanks for putting the peace and love in the chat. I just love to see everybody remember to do that. Put some peace and the love in the chat, y'all. Because, again, you guys make this happen. Guys, please reach out to me. Tell me your stories, man. Tell me your story. Tell me what happened. Tell me what, I, what we're right about. Tell me what we were wrong about. I want to know. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see it. You know, tell us what we're right about. Tell us what we're wrong about. I want to see it. I want to hear it all. Everybody gets motivated when they hear someone else's story that's the same as theirs. You might feel like my story the same as this one over here or just like that one. People are motivated when they hear about, wow, okay, so this happened. Oh, okay, that happened. Yeah, so let's keep on doing what we're doing. Yes, indeed, y'all. I'm going to leave y'all just like I came in here. In the, way, in the words of my main man, Don Cornelius, in parting, I wish you nothing but love, peace, and soul training. I'll see y'all tomorrow a.m., Tuesday a.m. I'm about to leave a link in the chat, y'all. Remember, get the book. If you need a session with me, go on my uh, Instagram or my Facebook Messenger. Send me a message. I'll send you my calendar. Yes, indeed. I get it. You know, I know it's crazy out here. I'm going to get you right, though. I'm going to get you right. 
See y'all Wednesday night, same time, same channel. Peace.